present for our walk in this world. They resound. Welcome back to Weekdays with Jesus and John. So glad you're joining us for these. So glad that you're here with us this week. I look forward to having these studies with you. I look forward to the challenges that I find as I read through these scriptures. Let's go ahead and look at John chapter 5. John chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. When we left the story, Jesus had healed an official son, the second of the signs that he had done in, in Cana of Galilee, or in the region of Galilee. And in chapter 5, we find a, a third sign, a third wonder, a third healing. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and, the, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate a pool in Aramaic called Bethesda, which has a five-roofed colonnade. And these lay a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for thirty-eight years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there a long time, he said to them, he said to him, Do you want to be healed? The sick man answered, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I am going, another steps down before me. And Jesus said to him, Get up and take your bed and walk. And at once the man was healed, and he took up his bed and walked. Now that day was the Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to take up your bed. But he answered them, The man who healed me, that man said to me, Take up your bed and walk. And they asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn, as there was a crowd in the place. And afterward Jesus found him and said to him, See, you are well. Sin no more that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had healed him. And this is why the Jews were persecuting Jesus, because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father is working until now, and I am working. This was why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. You know, there are a number of things in this passage that just jump out to me. Out to me. One of them is the lack of compassion for these Jewish leaders. They're more concerned with the man carrying his bed on the Sabbath than they are. In fact, here is a man who was lame for 38 years who is now healed. Now, I guess we can excuse it. Maybe they didn't know, but he had been there for so long. Surely they knew he had been there. Now, the man's statement about no one to carry him into the pool, the tradition was that an angel stirred the pool, and the first one in or the first few in, after the angel had stirred it, would be healed. And because he was lame, he couldn't make it down there before anybody else. And so for his adult life, maybe his teen life, he had been waiting for that moment where he could be the first one in and maybe be healed. Jesus happens by. Jesus heals him. Do you want to be healed? Take your bed, walk. So he's taking his mat and he's carrying this lightweight mat and the Jews say, why are you carrying a mat? It's a Sabbath. You're not supposed to carry anything. Despite the fact that he'd been healed and he says, well, the man who healed me and told me to. Well, who is this that healed you on the Sabbath? See, again, they're not concerned about the healing. They're concerned about the Sabbath and the tradition of the Sabbath. And so they will point out, or John will point out, that that's why the Jews were persecuting Jesus, because he did these things on the Sabbath. The man breaks the Sabbath tradition. Jesus breaks the Sabbath tradition. Then John will reveal that because Jesus said his father is working and that he is working, he compares himself with God and makes himself equal to God. So now the Jews are looking at that and calling him a blasphemer and looking to have him put to death. The Jews are seeking at the very least to limit Jesus' influence, at the very most to have him put to death for blasphemy. Because, after all, he's breaking the Sabbath. There are a couple of things that I want to, to point out here. A couple of lessons that I want us to see. One, I want you and I to look at where we are religiously. I want us to look at the text I want to look, look at what we do in worship. And I want you to ask this simple question and then do your own research. I can't answer every question today. But I do this all along for me, and I've done it since my teen years. Am I following truth or am I following 
tradition? Have I put the traditions of of people, of man, above the truth of God? Or have I, or am I following truth and maybe even letting go of some traditions? Because after all, they are just traditions. They're not truth. I know there are many in many different religious groups that elevate traditions over truth. And my challenge for me and my challenge for you is that that we don't do that. That we make sure that that we are focused on what God has to say. The next thing I want us to look at is this whole idea of, of persecution, of prejudice against Jesus and against his followers. I'm afraid that we are living in a world right now where there is even more and more of a growing persecution and prejudice against Christians. If you turn on the television and you watch a, a situation comedy, and you watch a television show of any type, and anyone who is Christian seems to be the brunt of people's jokes, they're played off to be the ignorant one. They're played off to be the, the bigoted, the intolerant. Maybe we deserve some of that. Maybe we have made ourselves appear that way. But making fun of people who are trying to live right. Because I, I feel like there are more Christians who just simply try to live a good life and to follow Jesus than who are judgmental and intolerant. But yet we are being portrayed that way. And I think it's a designed effort by Satan and however he controls people to try to make Christianity look unappealing. We're being persecuted. We're being prejudiced against. We need to be careful as Christians that we don't feed that and that we stand up for what's right. And we do what's right. And we live what's right and we share with people the true message of Jesus that he does save us from our sins and no we're not perfect but we are forgiven because of the blood of Christ let's go to God in prayer dear God we thank you so much for your blessings we thank you for your your love father we thank you for your word and I pray that as we spend time in your word, that we compare your word with the things that we do, and that we make sure that the things we do in our life, the things that we do in our worship, the things that we do in our churches are not our traditions, but are from your word, and that we are following your truth. And Father, we live in a world right now where it seems more and more people are opposed to you and opposed to Christians. And Father, help us to stand strong. And help us to remain faithful no matter what's going on in the world around us. Help us to live for you and to bring glory to you in everything that we do. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining us as we have spent time this weekday with Jesus and John. I look forward to spending time with you tomorrow. Until then, my prayer is, as always, that God will bless your day. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words in.